Hello, welcome back gamers and today we are going to do a short video where we talk about a different topic rather than just me reading out the rules so you don't have to. This time we are going to discuss what to do when you are done with Clue. Now while I will admit it is not a popular opinion, I have never much gone in for the game of Clue, or Cluedo as we Aussies like to call it. I don't know if there's any one thing that didn't really do it for me, whether it's the moving around and having a lot of pointless turns where you're in between places, whether it is the repetitiveness of the game going over and over again. The fact that the game is really easy to reset kind of makes it less enjoyable, I guess, because like it's done, it's over and away you go, there's another round, woo, because you really want to play it for the fourth time in a row, friend whose house that I'm at and doesn't own any other game, yeah, let's do it again. The other thing is, I guess, the aspect which a lot of uh, Clue or Cluedo players will know, when people do tend to get a little bit tired of the game, you always have those players that are just like, I'm going to have a guess. It's like, you've only been in one room. Yeah, but I'm done. I want to get to the cheese platter. Just guess, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, look, I won. Or I didn't win. Um, just that, I don't know. There's something about the game which has never really clicked for me. But even if it has clicked for you and you are an avid Clue player, what do you do when you or your friends need something else? That's what we're going to look at today. So I'm going to start in no particular order. These are the alternatives that I think you should all check out. First of all, 221B Baker Street. I've already done a video on how to play this game, but the fact is it is a great alternative to Clue. Similarly to Clue, you're going to look around in places and venues around London rather than a single building, and you're going to look for clues. The difference in this game is the cases. There are 70-something cases in this game. So each case will start reading out what has happened. So you've got a different murder each time um, or crime that you have to solve. And each case requires a different bunch of evidence, whether it's the murder weapon, whether it's the motive, the person, the accomplice, whatever it is. So each time you're doing something slightly different. Not only that, but there are different ways to play the game. Instead of all wandering around like little Sherlock Holmes going to different places, similarly to what you do in Clue, you can pair up into teams so that there's just two Sherlocks moving around the board, but you could have three or four or five players. And the clues that you get are very cryptic. It's not just you found Spanner here. Um, it could be a riddle that you have to solve. It could be part of a sentence that you need to go somewhere else and finish, which is super awesome, especially in, your, in groups and you're arguing over what the clue actually means and where you should go next. The last way to play is completely cooperative. Everyone at the table is playing as the single Sherlock Holmes meeple, so you don't need to move around the board at all. You just elect where you're going to go, check the evidence, check the clues, argue about what it means and elect where to go next and try and finish the game with as few clues as possible and the game will rank you. So several ways to play including team play and completely cooperative with the whole table. It is a fantastic game. I've played five or six cases and I'm definitely not tired of it yet and neither are some of my friends which is the main thing. I don't tire of board games very quickly but they often do and this one they are not tired of. There are two to six players ages 10 and up. It goes for about 40 odd minutes for a proper game, um, but the completely table cooperative version can take as few as 15, 20 minutes um, before you're solving cases. So that is option number one. Option number two, Mysterium. If you haven't heard about this game and you are a detective whodunit sort of gamer, then just stop what you're doing and order this game. It is similar to Clue in that you are trying to solve a murder and that's about where everything goes off into weird, strange directions. You are not detectives, you are psychics and you are talking to the ghost of the person who was murdered and they are trying to tell you who is the killer, the weapon that they used and where the murder was committed, but they're not allowed to talk the ghost, represented by one of the players at the table, only has cards which have vague paintings and symbols on them and they look at the board which has a bunch of characters on it, a bunch of venues and a bunch of weapons and the ghost has to just show you a card per round and you have to try and figure out from that card which direction the ghost is leading you in. It is absolutely hilarious, um, super super frustrating and just 
amazing, especially if you're with those mates that are going to sell it. Actually play a ghost, actually put on a hammy, um, psychic sort of persona for the game. There's no more to play on, there's no rolling and moving around, you just move up with your guesses as the time ticks away at the grandfather clock in the mansion. Um, super original gameplay, lots of fun, two to seven players, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend playing it two players, um, definitely it is for a group. But 40 minutes, 10, uh, 10 years old and up, Mysterium is definitely one to check out. Lastly, Murder, She Wrote, the board game. Can you believe something this glorious does exist? And from a purely cynical perspective, you might have thought, well, someone that's going to make a campy version of a TV show in a board game is probably just going to copy Clue and that's it with a different sticker on it. You like all those thousands of copies of Monopoly and other versions of Clue that you see out there. Now, that is not the case with this game. With this game, it is similar to Clue in that you go to different venues and you're looking for the murderer, but it is much more similar to an episode of Murder, She Wrote because the murders just keep happening. One of the players, which is secret to the other players, is the murderer, and they're going to go around killing more witnesses as, you, as the other players go around trying to figure out who the murderer is and accuse them of the murder before they kill five witnesses and then escape. That makes the dynamic much more fun and much more replayable as people are moving around in different ways and using different strategies to throw off the detectives and to disguise themselves as murderers. It is a good bit of fun and for such an old game, it really stands up. So now I suppose it's time to put these games in some sort of order. I'm going to start with complexity here, okay? Mysterium is 100%, 110% if that was an actual number, the more difficult of these games to play. This is for the hardcore gamer friends who do not sp mind spending 40 minutes, an hour, whatever like that, playing through a game. But also it's for the people that are the game masters and the, the hosts of game night to really set up. There's a lot of tricky bits to put together into this game to make it run smoothly. So that is the most difficult to learn, get your head around and start playing. Sherlock Holmes is the simplest of all of these games. The booklet that comes with it is very, very self-explanatory. Um, it's very similar to Clue in the moving around that you do. And the way that you play the game kind of gets more simple the other ways that you play it. You know, the, the team mode is even easier because you've got less Sherlock's moving around the board. And the cooperative mode is easiest of all. You skip all the movement stuff that you do in, in games like Clue and that. So this is certainly the easiest. You can unwrap this and play it 20 minutes later, all right? And play it successfully 20 minutes later. In between these two is Murder, She Wrote, the board game. It is very similar to Clue, but the dynamics of having one of the people as the murderer, and so there's a very, very uh, clear list of what can and can't be done, and who should be looking at what when these things happen, so you don't accidentally find out who the murderer is. It takes a little bit more commitment than something like Sherlock. With regards to replayability, I would definitely give it to Sherlock Holmes, the board game, although I've probably played Mysterium a few more times. That is over the course of a couple of years now, whereas Sherlock Holmes the board game was given to me less than a year ago I think and I've gone through six cases so considering all the different games nights you have with other people bring games and you have to kind of share who's playing what this has had a lot of representation and it's the only game here that we have re-racked after we've finished a case and immediately started on the next one we were so interested in getting to what the next case was it's completely different the other games it's always a murder, it's always starting the same sort of way, and the process to find who the murderer is, is the same. This game, completely different case from one to the next, and what you're looking for changes as well. So, replayability comes Sherlock Holmes, then Mysterium, then Murder, She Wrote. Lastly, which game would I give the most recommendation to, basically first place, second place, and third place out of these options? Well, not surprisingly, option number one and in first place is Sherlock Holmes. Uh, 221B Baker Street, the Sherlock Holmes master detective game. It was the one that was replayed the most, it was the easiest to learn, and it's the one that gets requested from friends to play a lot more often, which makes it's so much easier for the person who's hosting game night if other people are coming over and going, yes, that game, instead of, mm, 
could play this, we could play that. It is definitely a winner and I still have 60 plus cases to go through. So it definitely sets itself up to be a big part of your board game life. Second place has to go to Mysterium. Um, it is a lot more complicated to play, so much more complicated than say Murder, She Wrote or 221B Baker Street. It is a lot longer to set up, but some of the interactions that you have with the other players are just tremendous. Not only is it intriguing trying to find out who the winner is and, and the teams end up being collaborative right at the end of the game. So there's this real sense of achievement and winning for the uh, psychics at the end, but also the absolute frustration when you play as the ghost and you hand someone a card which you think is just amazing. It's definitely going to lead them to uncover who the murderer was and they interpret that card completely differently. And as a ghost you're not allowed to say anything and they're going off on a completely wrong angle and they definitely decide this guy is the murderer and it's not the murderer and they start yelling at you for giving them such a crappy clue. Um, you start, well, you can't yell at them because you're the ghost, but at the end of the game, you have a massive debrief where you both, where you, everyone sort of abuses each other as to how terrible the clues were or how terrible their guesses were. Um, it's just those interactions which put this game over and above and kind of worth the trouble that it takes to set up. Last but most definitely not least is Murder, She Wrote, the board game. Now, while I haven't been able to convince as many players to have as many goes of this game as I would like, it does still stand the test of time. The rogue elements of having a murderer amongst you and more murders happen as you are trying to solve the original one is super fun and really links in with the original television series. Now, the game does suffer a little bit from all the secrecy mechanics that it requires. You guys have played Mafia, that have played Resistance, that have played Sacred Hitler and things like that. Know that if you do not have the right players, the ones that are really interested in keeping their identity secret and playing the game in its true character, that is going to affect the game for everyone else. And that's kind of the problem that I've had in finding people that play these games. I've got a lot of players who love playing board games, but some of those people get bored very quickly and it's super easy to derail a game like this if you are being obvious or nonchalant about whether you're the murderer or not. Also, you can, all, you can have those players that are just super, super frustrated with not being able to figure things out and just express that frustration, um, perhaps the drunker they get. So that can also derail a game like this, but with the right people and the right enthusiasm, this game is definitely worth more than one go. It does take third place in this list, but keep in mind that is third way above where I would currently sit Clue. So those are my suggestions if you are like me and have gone a little bit tired of Clue and the same old mechanics. Do let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do let me know if you've played any of these games and you agree or disagree with these evaluations. More importantly, no matter which game you prefer, keep on playing and tune in for another video sometime. See ya!